People's Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Wilkes versus Dixon Sr. You all are living together. And it's my understanding from the court papers, you fell in love on the job. Tell me about that, Miss Wilkes. Okay, well, I drive cabs. Um, I usually drive at nighttime. So I got a call one night to pick up someone. So I went to go pick him up and I was taking him somewhere. Um, we was just basically conversing, you know, getting to know each other just through me driving the cab. And then I found out that um, he was interested. He was asking me all kind of different questions. We found out that we share the same birth date. So that's kind of what brought us together. Like, we was the same age, same day. Um, so we just started talking from that point. So that was more than just a cab ride right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can say that. So how did you go from a cab ride to living together? I always say he kind of snuck in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> how did he sneak in? Uh, he brought his clothes over there to wash and dry. And when he brought his clothes, they just never left. <laughs> All right, so Mr. Dixon, were you, were you sneaking in? I was just like, hey, let's go with it then, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna leave my clothes here as long as possible until you tell me to get my stuff and go, you know? <laughs> so when did you realize that you were falling for him? When well, he gave me some money to get my hair did. <laughs> All right. This is a nice, pragmatic relationship. I like that. I, Washing clothes, you know, got to get my hair done, here's some money. That's a nice, pragmatic relationship. I like that. She do for me, I can do for her. Yeah. What is it about her made you say, this, this, this has legs right here. This is somebody I could maybe be with. Well, I started feeling her. She's like, she could cook, and I like to eat. You know, the way she smiled at me, the way she was talking to me. You know, it's like the conversation she was giving me, it seemed like she was a real woman by her character, how she was talking, you know? She bought me a little turtle, you know? Is that the little turtle? You know, she bought me a little turtle <laughs> for a little birthday trip. We took a uh, Daytona or whatever. So I was like, that's what's up. Because we were supposed to be getting shirts. Somehow she just bought me a turtle and she was like, I'm gonna name it Reggie. <laughs> okay. So Reggie the yeah. turtle. Nothing um... says love like a turtle. <laughs> I mean, come on now. It is cute, but seriously, why a turtle? <laughs> the turtles was cheaper than the shirts. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pragmatic woman. I uh, love it. So, Ms. Wilkes, how do you go from buying a turtle... A love turtle. A love turtle. Yeah. ...to being in court today? Why are you here? I want to know what's going on. I just want to know if he's actually being involved with someone else. So you think he's cheating? Basically, yeah. The way he moved, the way he act, the things that he do, the things that I have found and stuff like that. Okay. Now, Mr. Dixon, are you cheating? I ain't cheating at all. It's like I come from work sometimes and sometimes I feel like she'll smell me. She like did it about twice. I say, okay, she what does my that private look part. like? She smells my private part. They're thinking I've been cheating. Trust she me, right? smells your private part? Yeah, she don't smell it twice, about twice. Okay, what does that look like when you come in? I, I don't like that, you know, because I, I feel like I'm sweating and everything from work and everything. Well, I'm gonna go and have sex with somebody and after this guy work, you know, I'm sweaty. Okay, okay wait, 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 wait. Okay, hold on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, you, I, know? Uh, you walk in the house and immediately your girlfriend smells your privates. Yeah. It's like when you come in the house, she's like, where you been? I'm like, I've been hanging out with the fellas after work, you know, around to the corner to the bar. She was like, and you come in the house this time of night? She like, let me smell your... I, I let her, though. I let her, but I don't like that. Wait so when he hits the door, you just say, drop him. No, I be like, let me smell your penis. And you sniff it. I took a whiff. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously. Uh... <laughs> I... Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to touch that. that. Go. I'm going to yeah. let that one go. Let, let it right. there. Have you found any physical evidence of why you believe Mr. Dixon is cheating? Okay. One day I was going to the dollar store. Just one Sunday morning. Usually I put my bags in the front seat with me. Some say put them in the back seat. So I go to put them in the back seat and I see a little gold shimmering thing on the floor. And it's a piece of condom wrapper. Oh! I have, I also have the picture of it because I took the picture. Oh, okay. Ron, would you please get that yes, uh, piece of evidence, please? Thank you, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, so 
what I'm looking at is, is, is this your hand holding the cotton That's wrapper? That's my hand holding it. And this is in your car? In my car, in the back seat of the driver's side. It's only two people that drive my car. That's me and that's him. It's not mine, so it must be his. And so you believe, based on finding this in your car, mm -hmm. that he had sex in your car? Either he had sex in my car, he had sex at their house one and brought the condom and left it on the floor. Because he's always dropping things <coughs> from out his pocket. And it goes in the back seat on the floor. His comb, chapstick, change. So what was your explanation for her finding this in her car? It's not mine, so and I'ma say it like this here. Anything could happen. It's like the window could be down, you know, something could fly out in there, you know. Okay, what are you anything. driving? I don't, it just could have been anything. I don't think that could have yeah, out of my pocket. To, That's I just have, the top of a condom, now. There ain't no whole look, condom, right? I have driven a lot of cars in my life. I've driven a lot of miles. Right. I can honestly say... Never. That I've never, ever. never, ever, in the history ever. of car driving, had a condom wrapper fly in my window. <laughs> yeah. Well... <laughs> Have you found any other physical evidence of why you believe Mr. Dixon is cheating? Okay, well, his brother was staying with us. I don't remember the time of night it was, but I had done went to sleep. I woke up, it was just his brother in the living room by himself. So I was like, well, where's Reggie? He was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. So he getting his phone all nervous. So I was like, mm, let me put my Inspector Gadget hat on. So I get my cell phone and I go on his online banking and I see different withdrawals from the bank and then I see a hotel. So you go on your phone and you see a hotel charge? Yes, I do. For that night? For that night. So then what do you do? Well, I'm calling him, I'm texting. His phone must be dead because it's going straight to voicemail. So I'm sitting around. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. He didn't get in till like six o'clock. And so that's when it, you know, I made up a little story about, oh, well, you know, such and such told me that they seen you at the hotel, you know, just to get him to tell on himself. And so that's when he admitted that he was at the hotel, but then he said, you know, he came up with this bogus story about how he got it for somebody else. Mr. Dixon, you were at a hotel at two o'clock in the morning and your girlfriend didn't know about it? Well, it's like 3 something in the morning. I got a call from a friend. She was in a situation. And I was like, that friend right there been before her. I ever met her. So I was like looking out for a friend. So got a room for her and her boyfriend. But she got a boyfriend. What's she well, need for? Well, the boyfriend yeah. must be don't got a job. Must be he can't afford a room because they ain't had no way to go. So I was like, I had some money in my pocket. She look out for me, I'm look out for her. So, but here's Everybody the thing, she was out. calling you. Why didn't you answer your phone? My phone was dead at the time. Let, let me ask you something. Is this a woman you had been intimate with in the past? I was once, twice. Oh. But that was in the past. That's in the past, though. Right. But, like, you know, that's a friendship. You know, it's sometimes things happen. And, you know, when you're in lonely nights, you know, Sometimes, you know, you got, a, you got a friend, you know, just hang out and something just happened at that moment. And but you didn't like, tell me at that point in time. You didn't tell me. I ain't gonna let her know, because <laughs> I, I would let her know she would think that so something's going on there. So that's why there's no so, trust, well, because I, I, you didn't tell me. And you don't believe any of it? No, they could have been having a threesome for all I know. No, I don't believe it. Mr. Dixon, I gotta say, it's, it's not looking good. But here's the thing. We have his side, we have her side, and we have the woman in the hotel side. Ron, would you please escort the witness in? Yes, sir. Yes. Mm. Would you state your name, please, for the court? Jasmine Milton. Right. So, Miss Milton, Mr. Dixon says he got a hotel for you and your boyfriend. Is that correct? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh... Who did he get the hotel room for? It was about my boyfriend but my boyfriend was not there. A friend of his was there, though. A friend of whose? His. Mr. Mr. Dixon? Dixon? Yes. Mr. Dixon, who was there with you all? It was me, her, and my brother. How hard is that? Okay. This true? So why was your brother there? Because he was the driver for me, and he left. So then it was just you two there? Yes. It was Were there. you intimate with Miss Milton no, I the wasn't. night in question? No, I wasn't. Miss Wilkes? Do you believe this? I see the expression on your face. No, not really. What are you thinking? That they were intimate that night. Miss Milton. 
Were you intimate with Mr. Dixon that night? The God on his truth, I cannot answer that. He's right. I don't... The, the circumstances surrounded around my boyfriend. Like, we were going through something and I went to my go-to guy. That's Reggie. I'm, I, he comes to me when he has stuff. That's what <coughs> it is. We're friends. Like, we gonna always be friends. I can't, I can't even sit here and tell you that we did or that we did not. Not that particular night, no. I was crying and drunk. I have no way of knowing. None. But it's a possibility. Yes, it is. And you have been intimate with Mr. Dixon in the past. Yes. And so you're in a hotel room with a woman that you used to be intimate with. Was You've she... already lied about the fact that her boyfriend was there when he wasn't. And you're telling this court that nothing happened? Nothing happened. Ms. Right, Wilkes, so... what are you thinking right now? I'm disgusted. And I that's, can see I, that. I, one thing I hate is a liar because I'm too real. Everything that ever happens to me, whether a guy or a girl or whoever try to talk to me, he knows it. You know, he's, he's seen it. My phone is not locked. I don't have nothing to hide. So I feel like if something is going on or something did go on, we wasn't having no problems because the relationship was fresh. So if he did, I'm disgusted. All right. Well, to get the answer, the court has retained the services of private investigator and certified polygraph examiner Patrick Coffey. Ron, would you please escort Mr. Coffey into the courtroom? Yes, sir. How are you, Mr. Coffee? I'm doing great, ma'am. You? We're good. Thank you. Mr. Coffey, uh, what did you do to investigate this case? A member of our team conducted a full forensic analysis of Mr. Dixon's phone. He was able to recover current and deleted messages, browser history, photos, and videos. So what did your team uncover? According to my team's finding, the three most used applications were Facebook, Twitter, and Chatterbait. What is Chatterbait? Chatterbait is a live adult video chat room. On this application, a viewer can interact with live sex streaming by adding their suggestions in an open forum. Mr. Dixon, Chatterbait. I don't know what little Chatterbait is. I You've never heard, heard of Chatterbait. chatterbait. It's on your phone. Well, that, that, yeah, I ain't never look at no child bait in my phone, so I don't know what it could be. All right, did you find anything else of interest on Mr. Dixon's phone? Oh, yes. Tell us about that. Our team was able to uncover more than a dozen naked photos. Some were nude photos, and others were photos of two or more people engaging in sexual activities. Mr. Dixon, who are these people that you have photos on your phone engaging in sexual activity? Well, I look at porn, so I might could have screenshot something or I might could have been saving videos in my phone because, you know, you could download them videos in your phone, so could have been downloaded videos and no telling because I ain't had none of that. So I don't know what none of that is. So these are downloaded videos of strangers? Exactly. It might be strangers, yeah, because that ain't nothing me. I don't recall myself. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right, so, Mr. Coffey, after examining these photos and videos, was Mr. Dixon in any of those pictures or videos? According to our findings, Mr. Dixon was not in any of the photos, and we believe that these are downloads from pornographic sites. So, Ms. Wilkes, did you know about these things in his phone? I mean, I know he watched porn in his phone, but I didn't know he'd be screenshotting and saving pictures. <laughs> To further investigate this, the court also ordered Mr. Dixon to undergo a polygraph examination, correct? Yes, sir. You asked him a number of questions. The first was, the night you were in the hotel, did you have sexual intercourse with Miss Milton? What was his response? He answered no. What did the lie detector determine? And the polygraph determined... And the polygraph determined... He was being truthful. Ms. Wilkes, tell me what you're thinking right now. I mean, just because he told the truth, uh, uh, because he was being truthful about them not being intimate, you still was there and you still lied about it. So that don't make me feel no better. Mr. Dick, do you see the concern th that this has caused? I see that, and I know I made a mistake by not telling her at the time, but I'm just here to let her know, like, she done got the answers she need to know, and she can trust me again. All right. And there was one last question. 
Since moving in with Miss Wilkes, have you had sexual intercourse with any woman other than her? What was his response? He answered no. What did the lie detector determine? The polygraph determined he was being truthful. <laughs> Ms. Wilkes, any relationship has got to be built on trust. And, I mean, you are met in a cab, but now you're driving him away because you don't trust him. You've got to trust him. He's told you, and you knew this when you, when you met him. He's a, an outgoing person, but that doesn't necessarily mean something's going on. Well, let me well, just say this, Mr. Dixon. You need to do some things to build her faith in you. Clearly, you love her. And even though she's trying to hold it back, she loves you, too. Yeah, because she knew I could cook But you need too. to move forward. <laughs> now, what is it that you want to do with your relationship? I mean, now that I know the truth... Yes, ma'am. I guess I'm willing to work past it as long as he could be... continue to be honest with me from this day forward. If he can do that, then we make and build a future together. All right. You all can move forward with this. We have counseling available for you. Take advantage of that. And as we say in this courtroom, don't cheat yourself out of a chance for a good relationship. Court is adjourned. <laughs>